What's good? Brian Tong here with the Apple Buy for the good and bad inside Apple. There's plenty of new rumors. We'll get to Apple's earnings, but we start off with the iPhone 7 and a report by KGI Securities' Ming-Chi Kuo that claims there are two 5.5-inch versions of the iPhone 7 Plus, one with a single eyesight camera and the other with a dual camera design. Now, the iPhone 7 Plus with a dual camera design would take advantage of last year's acquisition of Israeli camera technology company, Lynx Imaging. Lynx's technology brings multiple sensors at a smaller size, which could help eliminate the iPhone's protruding camera nipple. Now, their cameras can also take SLR quality photos with significantly better noise reduction, improved low light photos, and even includes 3D depth mapping. So if you were wondering how much better can the iPhone's camera get, this could be it. Also a new report from 9to5Max is Apple will likely debut the new iPad Air 3 at a mid-March event targeted for March the 14th. It will be the first update to the mid-sized iPad since October of 2014, and an unconfirmed design schematic showed it off with potentially four speakers like the iPad Pro, and even more curious, a possible flash on the camera for the first time. I don't want that. Now, the long-rumored iPhone 5SE, formerly known as the long-rumored iPhone 6C, will also be announced at the event with its curved edges shown off in this purported photo from the One More Thing forums. Now, the new iPhone 5SE is expected to bring Apple Pay, Live Photos, and the A9-M9 processor chipset so that it's not completely behind when the A10-equipped iPhone 7 releases. But that name, like, what could it stand for? The iPhone 5 Special Edition? Or maybe Self Esteem? Or the iPhone 5 SA? Are you for real or what, Holmes? I'm for reals. New Apple Watch bands including new colors for the rubber sports bands, more colors for the Hermes bands and a black version of the Milanese Loop are expected at the event as well. On Antec reports, Intel released an updated processor list that includes new Skylake chips that could be used for an updated 15-inch Retina MacBook Pro. All of these are quad-core options, and the delays in getting these out have in turn pushed back an update for Apple's MacBook lines. We could hear something about an update in March, but more likely it will happen at WWDC in June, where Apple has introduced new MacBook hardware in the past. All right, let's talk Apple's financial results. It was another record quarter with Apple posting $75.9 billion in revenue and a net quarterly profit of 18.4. Apple sold a record 74.8 million iPhones in the quarter, just beating out the 74.5 million sold the year before. Mac sales were down to 5.3 million units compared to 5.5 in the same quarter of last year. And iPads took another nasty hit down to 16.1 million compared to 21.4 a year ago, even with the introduction of the new iPad Pro. Ouch. Now, Apple also touted record Apple Watch and Apple TV quarterly sales, but still declined to actually give sales numbers. Womp womp. But when you look at the numbers, Apple's iPhone growth has really hit a wall. That's their bread and butter, and Apple is expecting its first decline ever of iPhone sales for the next quarter. And also in its other categories, like the iPad and Macs, they're declining as well, especially the iPad. I've said in past shows the iPad Pro was just so niche and that it really wouldn't change the iPad's fortunes, and guess what? That held true. Now, 2016 really looks very flat with little innovation happening for Apple right now. And during the earnings calls, Tim Cook was asked if virtual reality was a geeky niche or something that could go mainstream. Cook said he does not believe VR is a niche, and he said it's really cool, and it has some interesting applications. We know Apple has a small team working on augmented reality, and Apple has recently hired some experts in the VR space. The Big A has filed multiple patents for virtual reality products over the years that we've shown you, including their own video goggles and 3D virtual interfaces. But they aren't pioneering this stuff, and they are very late to the game. Really, they aren't even in it right now. All the innovation is happening with Oculus, Samsung, and many more, but not Apple. And if you're someone who loves the idea of an Apple car, a report from Apple Insider says there has been a hiring freeze on Project Titan after multiple execs, including Apple design chief Johnny Ive, have become unhappy with the project's direction and progress. This comes after the Wall Street Journal reported that Project Titan's head, Steve Zadesky, told colleagues that he was leaving the company for personal reasons. So uh, we're just going to pump the brakes on the Apple car for now. All right, that's going to do it for this week's show. You can email us at theapplebyte at cnet.com or tweet me at Brian Tong, and I'll answer them after I finish my personal arts and crafts time. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you all next time for another bite of the Apple.